Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, also bettingangle.us. It is July 27th, 2024. The purpose of this video is just to give people another opinion. I see a lot of people are in the public square giving opinions on Terrence Crawford, Madrimov. Let me just say where I disagree with Antonio Tarver and Tim Bradley. Um, let's also talk about how this fight could be an extreme challenge. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now it's no secret, Terrence Crawford on the other side of 35 wants to fight Canelo, right? So he can then, you know, close out his career, right? Having fought another first ballot Hall of Famer, right? Um, I need for people to understand that the guy he's picked here is tough. Turkey Alashaik, the uh, Saudi Arabian boxing Swangali, um, has a friendship with Eddie Hearn. I believe these guys quietly feel that Madrimov is underrated, that Madrimov has a real shot at beating Terence Crawford. That's one of the reasons why this fight's happening. Let me give you another reason, right? It's because I think Crawford understands that at 154, he would have a very hard time. I mean, a very hard time. Could well lose the fight against Virgil Ortiz. Ortiz has a power jab. He has a 100% knockout ratio. He would go looking for Crawford, right? Understand, Mean Machine knocked down both guys, Virgil Ortiz and Crawford, right? Anybody hit on the chin the right way could hit the canvas. I think that's a tough fight for Terrence Crawford, right? Tim Zhu is a guy who can hold his own in the pocket, has an excellent lean, forces you to reach across the pocket to try to find him. I think Crawford would have a tough time with Tim Zhu. You'd be hard-pressed to find higher volume than Sebastian Fundora. Likewise, you'd be hard-pressed to find a better body puncher than Erickson Lubin. Right? I believe what boxing's trying to do is boxing is trying to convince you that Terence Crawford would be competitive against Canelo. So Crawford's fighting an Eddie Hearn fighter who's roughly Canelo's size, minus 14 pounds. Crawford must have looked on the film and realized, as good as Madrimov is, and folks, he's extremely dangerous. As I've said here online, he's offensively blessed. But he's not Canelo, right? He's, Madrimov is not defensively blessed. Canelo is, right? So this is a tough fight because understand, Madrimov is the better athlete than Terrence Crawford. I would say Madrimov is a better athlete than Canelo. He's going to come across the ring. He's going to come looking for Terrence Crawford. Understand, this is a 154 pounder who I'm sure has doubts about whether Crawford, who's been off for more than a year, even belongs at 154 pounds. Let me say too, that Timothy Bradley is comparing Madrimov to Jeff Horn, right? Folks, Jeff Horn didn't have anything remotely close to Madrimov's ring coverage. Understand, Madrimov's going to walk up to Terrence Crawford, but he's going to want a cushion. In other words, he'll be on his front foot. He'll be coming in at angles. But this is the guy who understands he needs to have a little bit of a cushion. He doesn't want to wrestle with Terrence Crawford. He doesn't want this to be a grappling session. He knows he has the power once he gets an arm's length to throw punches and to knock down anyone with one shot. This is a blessed offensive fighter. 
right? So the challenge for Crawford, in my opinion, is going to be to survive and sidestep Badrimov's offensive skills. They're prodigious. He's two-handed, right? He throws a bunch of different punches with both hands. He has ring coverage. Crawford has to make sure he doesn't get caught by the superior athleticism and awkwardness of Madrimov as Madrimov unveils his offensive aggression and awkwardness. And Crawford needs to stick around long enough to take advantage of the fact that Madrimov is defensively challenged. Right? This is the athlete who, quite frankly, hasn't had to rely on his defense. So he drops his hands. He takes chances. Right? That's Crawford's opening. Crawford is the better defensive fighter. That's his opening. But offensively, he's going to be up against it for at least the first few rounds. Right? So when I hear Antonio Tarver say, you know, Crawford has the faster hands. Let me ask the question, at what distance? I don't think Crawford has the ring coverage this guy has. I don't think Crawford could fight the fight that he fought against Avanesian, uh, against this guy. There, Crawford cuts down a tree, right? Crawford throws a lot of body shots on Avanesian. You're not going to get close enough to this guy to throw body shots, because this guy has the offensive skills that you always have to be mindful of. And this guy's awkward. It's not just a herky-jerky motion, right? It's an athlete who is ad-libbing, right? Madrimov is really a jazz, music, jazz musician type. Right, this is the guy who jumps in the pocket and then he just goes where the flow is. So I think Terrence Crawford, early in this fight, is going to have a very steep learning curve. Right, I'm not buying what the experts are saying. Right, I think Crawford, you know, signs... For this fight with the idea that this fight is going to get him to Canelo. Let's be clear too on Canelo. Canelo no longer has to worry about David Benavides. The sanctioning body has pigeonholed Benavides. Right? They have said, look, the winner of Bevel Baterbiev, right? And both of those guys are in their 30s. Benavides, of course, has already sparred with Bevel. Benavides believes he beats Bevel. That might be true. That might not be true. Right? Bevel, of course, had sparred with Gilberto Ramirez and then destroyed him when the two of them fought. Right? Baterbiev is interesting. 100% KO ratio, but older. This is a guy in his late 30s. Right? So, Benavides, as you can imagine, recognizes that being given the winner of Bevo Baterbiev, that's an offer he can't refuse. Benavides is going to stay at 175. Cross him off Canelo's list. But understand the problem Canelo has, and it's severe. David Morrell is an interesting possible opponent. This is a two-handed guy who moves around a ring. He'd be a tough out for Canelo. You have Janabek, Alem Kaluli, who was dehydrated and wasn't able to do his last title defense at 160 pounds. I'm telling you that Janabek would be tough against anyone. Understand, too, Janabek is a southpaw. Janabek against Canelo would be an interesting match to figure out who wins the pocket. I personally feel Billy Joe Saunders, another southpaw, had an excellent shot that he foolishly gave away against Canelo. 
right? Let's talk about some others. I think Hamza Shiraz beats Canelo, right? Understand, that fight to me would look like Thomas the Hitman Hearns against the great Roberto Duran. We need to remember that fight, right? Two Hall of Famers, but Hearns was longer. Canelo is, let's say, 5'8". Hamza Shiraz is taller than that with one of boxing's best jabs. Right? I just don't know how Canelo gets inside on him. Right? So understand, Canelo in that world, and of course there are other dangerous people out there. Uh, I think Chris Eubank would give Canelo a very good fight. Right? In that world, I believe Canelo, who himself realizes that he's on the wrong side of 30 and who cares about his own legacy. I think if Terrence Crawford shows that he can fight above 147, I think Canelo takes that fight. In part because I think Canelo understands the other people around him are too dangerous. Right, Demetrius Andre lost to David Benavides. Right then, Andre announced that he was going to drop back down to 160. Why would he do that? Understand, he would give Canelo at 168, the same weight he fought Benavides, a very hard fight. Right, so what I believe is you have two guys interested in legacy. I think Crawford is looking around and Crawford realizes. There are a lot of sharks here, 154, right? A lot. I think Canelo's looking around at 168 and he realizes, okay, good. Benavides is no longer here. David Morrell. These other names, Janabek, right? Coming up from 160. Chris Eubank, who fought at 168 in the past, then dropped down to 160, right? Uh, and these guys are all tacticians. So I, I think Crawford ultimately fights Canelo. I do think that's a competitive fight. Uh, but let's just say Crawford has a very difficult matchup here against Madrimov. Right? I think Crawford is going to feel like he's been out of the ring for a year. I think he's going to be surprised by the punching power of Madrimov. Now, maybe Crawford solves the, the defensive lapses Madrimov has and then strategically takes apart Madrimov, right? But I'm just telling you, Crawford's not going to get in the zone that he got in against Victor Postal, the last guy to go the distance with him, where Crawford was able to move away from Postal on demand. He's in with a superior athlete, right? Crawford's going to have to be around the pocket, solve the defense, figure out how to be defensive himself, and then break down with Dream Off and land big shots, right? He won't be able to just move away from a Dream Off I'm telling you, Madrimov's not going to come out and be on his back foot. He knows he's offensively blessed. He knows he has ring coverage. Even though Crawford and he look like they're the same size, that's not the way guys at heavier weights think of it. Right? In Madrimov's world, whatever the guy looks like, the guy has been fighting at 147. He hasn't been fighting the 154 guys that Madrimov's been fighting, right? I'm sure Madrimov would not hesitate to fight Errol Spence, right? Errol Spence arguably is Crawford's biggest win. Let me also say, too, just to throw more red meat out there. Um, in fact, we'll save that for a future video. So, um... I think Crawford at this stage is just trying to set up a fight with Canelo. I think Crawford understands that these other fights, while they put a lot of money in his pocket, 
they carry a lot of risk. Crawford is unbeaten as I make this video. I believe Crawford understands that whatever money he would get fighting a Sebastian Fundora, right, pales in comparison to the hit his legacy would take if he were to lose to Sebastian Fundora, right? Madrimov, I believe, is connected. That's how this fight happened. Um, Crawford, I'm sure, thinks the guy is too defensively challenged to be competitive, right, folks? I'm just telling you, offensively blessed fighters don't need that much defense in the early rounds. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I think Timothy Bradley uh, seems to remember a different Jeff Horn than I do, right? I don't believe Jeff Horn ever had Madrimov's level of offense, right? I think um, Antonio Tarver might be right in terms of if I ask the guys to throw 100 punches, maybe Crawford uh, reaches 100 faster than Madrimov. Does not matter. Madrimov can be eight feet away from you, decide he's going to throw a left hook and knock you out, right? That changes a lot of things, right? That's going to mess up Crawford's counterpunching at least early in the fight. Crawford is a quick study. Crawford is a guy who makes mid-fight adjustments, right? Crawford is, you know, a boxing analyst, boxing technician, boxing expert. No question about it. My point to you, though, is expect a real fight at the outset. Expect an opponent who's going to have to be convinced that the guy he's fighting belongs in the ring with him. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.